We all see it, we all feel it. Technology, and specifically digitalization, while well, it's changing everything. And often, yeah, it can lead to some stress, disruption, and some negative kind of attributes, but more times than not, it creates a myriad of benefits, particularly when those advancements hit the shop floor. And that's absolutely for sure here at Phoenix Contact. Digitalization is helping us each and every day. So one particular area that is really helping us here at Phoenix Contact is the incorporation of realities, mixed, augmented, virtual, all of those good things. And to help sort through that reality world, well, I've got Mr. Matt Kleinpeter here. Matt, you're our resident expert. You've been here, what, 14 years now? Yes. And this is, this is kind of your jam. This is your thing, right? Yeah, it's become my thing. Um, yeah. You know, was, was, was hired to do a lot of web work, which we still have tons of web work, um, mm -hmm. but saw a lot of value in this extended reality. That yeah, you're about. so help me and everybody watching out there understand this. I mean, mixed, virtual, which one's which? And I've begun hearing an internal term. I think you coined it, so we have you to blame for this. PXR, where does that factor into all of this? So PXR is Phoenix Extended Reality. The umbrella okay. industry term is extended reality, which is any reality that um, you know comes along that, that helps further and advance this, uh, these technologies. Um, with augmented reality, which is superimposing a virtual element on a physical element, a virtual reality, which is complete immersion um, in, a, in a CGI space, mixed reality, which is interacting with augmented reality, and uh, the newest that we've kind of gotten into is assisted reality, which mm -hmm. is remote assistance using a headset typically um, to uh, facilitate some sort of uh, remote application. Okay, so PXR again, that, that's the umbrella term you've coined here, we've, we've adopted it here at Phoenix Contact, but it incorporates all those different right, realities. Right. And the cool thing here at Phoenix Contact is we've begun experimenting and incorporating pretty much all of those different ones, right? Yeah. And the first one maybe we'll expand on is the use of wearables. And I'm totally gonna mess up on whether that's augmented or virtual, so I'm gonna take this, the safe road and say wearable PXR technology. <laughs> But we have incorporated wearable technology. Right, right. Here, right? And, and we, so the industry calls the, the wearables, the usage of wearables in remote collaboration as assisted reality, if we're gonna put it under this PXR umbrella. Okay. Um, and it's exactly that. So it's uh, generally a, a two-way video call between an operator and a specialist, and it's, you know, to uh, facilitate the fact that somebody can't be on site. Mm -hmm. Um, and to get you through a build or troubleshooting or, or anything like that to be the eyes and the hands of the operator uh, to get a job done. And it has the, the capability of augmentation inside of these headsets where we mm. can expand uh, not just as a two-way video call, but to actually annotate in real time mark up in real time so you can more accurately as a specialist on a PC through the headset guide uh, that operator to the solution. Mm -hmm. That's awesome and again I, I kind of alluded to this the fact that yeah it's great to apply all these definitions and thank you for helping sort through all that but the great thing here at Phoenix Contact is we are in fact walking the talk if you will and we've begun incorporating um, that type of technology and you know the first experiment, if you will, using wearables um, was with what in our manufacturing area with what we internally call our AST machine, advanced shielding technology, which is car part of our cable production. And um, I guess long story short, and we kind of have the pandemic and necessity being the mother of all inventions, um, really being the catalyst for us to jump into this wearable world, right? Right, so what happened was we had a, a machine that needed to be built. Mm -hmm. We had travel restrictions, um, and so we had to think outside the box on how we were gonna build this, um, kind of a, a contingency being, you know, let's, let's try remote collaboration uh, for the first time. And so we vetted several wearable devices, and we settled on one. We piloted that for this, uh, project last summer and it worked out perfectly. We were able to do this uh, machine 
build, get it up and running, uh, just as if somebody was sent here um, to build it on per in person. Yeah, and, and you're right. And I mean, just to offer a little bit of context for everybody watching out there is, I mean, Matt is exactly right. There would have been a team of individuals sent, in this case, from Germany, from our manufacturing headquarters, um, to, to online, to build up and, and start and validate this machine. But again, because of the pandemic, they were stuck at home. Um, the market, although at that particular point, it had taken a dip, everybody was kind of hitting the pause button on purchasing, but we knew it would whipsaw and rebound just the way it has. Um, and plus, obviously, it was a great time to onboard a machine when there is some production downtime. So we went ahead, we moved forward, and instead of the four, five, maybe even six in this particular case, individuals um, that would have come over, they sat at home <laughs> and, and they walked our on-site team, our U.S. team, through the onboarding of all this. And um, what, it took two weeks, three weeks? Yeah, yeah. And here we are. And now th the benefit today for all of you watching at home is, well, we've got a, a new machine incorporating this ad patented uh, advanced shielding technology within our M12 power cables such that we're able to crank out these cables on site here in the US each and every day to all of you. Um, so now that gives us two manufacturing locations to supply the market of uh, these M12 power cables. In addition, because of the success of this project, the cool thing is we're already thinking ahead to, well, what other cables can we make here in the US now? So our portfolio is now going to expand. So, a multitude of benefits that we really captured um, through this experimental project. Not to mention, it immediately set up just a couple months later, the use of wearable technology in our logistics area, right? Right, so we had a palletizer depalletizer that we needed to get back online. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, it came down to travel restrictions, kind of forced our hand. We, we wanted another remote project anyway to further advance the standardization of these wearables. And so we took this opportunity, it took about two months to get this depalletizer mm -hmm. back online uh, before the end of the year. And we did exactly that using um, assisted reality and uh, the video call between the specialist and the operator. Yeah, fantastic stuff there, Matt. And uh, just to kind of double down on the positive impacts of this entire project, you know, we're seeing some incredible net gains out of this. Now having two robotic palletizer depalletizers on site now. So as you can imagine now, with double the depalletizing capacity, well, we can get goods in, well, 100 times faster. A huge, huge asset as we continue this just historic rebound in, in the marketplace. And now, you know, we're able to get up to 5,500 line items out each and every day to all of you sitting at home watching this. And, you know, whether it's in your personal lives, in your professional lives, you know inventory is scarce right now. So the faster that we can help you, well, you can help your customers um, downstream from all that. So some fantastic advantages. And again, I can't stress enough how thankful I am you know, through the help of you, the, the team that um, had the courage to take this on and implement it, well, we are feeling the net gains each and every day now. So fantastic stuff there. Yeah. So now outside of the wearable technology, you know, that whole PXR umbrella, it is pretty broad, it's pretty big. Um, there are other areas and it's not just about those crazy little wearables that we've got. Um, there's some really cool customer things that, you know, particularly the way a customer engages with Phoenix Contact and our products today. So not again, not sure where that falls in terms of augmented virtual or whatever, but it's cool. Yeah, a little bit of both. We've uh, really seen a lot of value in augmented reality for uh, the customer specifically showcasing our, our product suite, maybe when the lead time of a sample is, is too great or it's too much of an expense or um, you're, you, know, you're, you wanna grab that product in lieu of setting up a, a sales call or something like that. So you can just go on their own website um, most times and, and get uh, the product that you wanna see place it in your space. Um, we've got animations with these products and, and we try to grab products from, from our whole product portfolio. Um, yeah, and you nailed it in terms of, 
at this point, most, not all, not every line item, all 60,000 line items, they're not all covered here, but a significant portion of our portfolio. And again, if you think about the way the market, our lives have changed because of COVID and the pandemic, you know, just ordering, ordering and sampling out a product from Phoenix Contact or asking a sales representative to come in and showcase a product for you, you know, those, those times are kind of behind us or it may take a while till we get there. But you can still experience Phoenix Contact products today with the use of these technologies, the 3D, you know, version of it and so right. on. And, you know, the other thing, when you think about some of the cost of these things, when you think about an HMI, I mean, that's one thing, you know, they're a few hundred dollars and to ship that and just for someone to play with and then ship it back and then potentially damage it, it's not necessarily the smartest thing to do. So this is a really pragmatic, practical use of this technology that allows somebody to, to get an understanding of what our products are all about. And, um, you know, the HMIs, I love them. The, the power supplies, of course, they're near and dear to my heart. Um, some fantastic stuff there. And then you've incorporated the ability to take those products and put them into a customer space, which I think is really cool. Yeah, we've, uh, with the product suite of power supplies, or we have some uh, PLCs, you know, we can when, animate different, showcase how modular they are and um, maybe expose some of the internals because it's, uh, a feature that you want to show off that you can't necessarily show off with, mm -hmm. the, with the real product or have to power it up first with the real product. So being able to take um, something like uh, a PLC Next or uh, a power supply and being able to showcase that uh, virtually and instantaneously has a lot of advantages. And then again, you've started to go one iteration, one step further now, incorporating some simulation technology within all this. Um, so now the next step that you've begun playing around with, and we've got a pro couple projects um, that you're involved with, of course, is not just a singular, singular product, but maybe taking multiple products and maybe third-party devices and creating some simulation type software, right? Right, so creating a solution um, where the customer can interface with it, make configuration changes, and see a reaction from you know what's what's included in that simulation. For example, um, you know, turning on a motor, changing yeah. the speed of the motor, being able to stop that motor, and and doing it all either on screen or in an augmented setting, um, really allows the customer to. Uh, familiarize themselves with right. that product in that solution um, before they go ahead and buy it and is it right for me yeah and that's I love that next step because again for everybody watching out there that's that's the payoff I think you know it's it's one thing to pick up a virtual product or even a real product but if it's not powered you don't quite get it or see or feel how it interacts with every component around it eh, you know how beneficial is it but again, with where you're building and where you're going, being able to see these products in action, even if it is virtual, huge, huge benefit. And to me, it's a big step forward. So I guess I gotta ask, so you've begun playing around with some of the stuff, we've got a couple products together. You think we'll ever be able to build a, uh, an entire virtual cabinet? Oh, absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> I got you on the hook for that, right? And, yeah, so, and I don't wanna digress too much, but at, at trade shows, when we start getting back into trade shows, that's where we, kind of test bed a lot of this stuff that we can see what works and what doesn't work and things like that. And I can't wait to get back and, and create things for trade shows um, like this cabinet. Yeah, no, I can't wait to see it either. Um, and it will be really cool. And again, it, when I think about it, everybody watching, um, the payoff for all of you is being able to, to understand and feel these products, um, even if you can't get your hands on them for whatever reason it may be huge, huge asset for all of you out there. So let's end with maybe, you know, some things that are just gaining traction here, um, building a little, little bit of momentum, um, but that being kind of the application or the on-site virtualization. I'm, I'm sure I messed that up, but, you know, being able to go on-site to a customer um, 
and then allow that experience such that a customer watching at home can go onto a website, experience all of, all of it, and see our products in action. So how does that fit into all this? Yeah, so we've taken uh, a camera and mapped a space uh, and with a photo photorealistic representation of that space then allows the customer kind of a, a self-guided tour okay. to see the space in, in its entirety and seeing where our products are and where they fit into that space. Yeah. And seeing that first site we've done, it was a wastewater facility, right? right? Right. Yeah. So it was really, really cool to me to see our products in action, seeing it with other uh, components, other vendors' components in a cabinet. But you definitely got an appreciation because it exa it's exactly what it was, a customer application. You understood exactly how our products fit into a control cabinet and how they can solve real-world solutions, again, for everybody watching at home. Um, so fantastic stuff. You get to see how all these products interact, how they function, how they work. And then for anybody who may be a little unfamiliar with Phoenix, it offers maybe that security blanket of, yeah, we are everything we say we are. We are industrial, we are rugged, and we're capable of standing the test of time in these particular environments. So, some cool stuff there. And taking that one step further, I know the other project you've got, um, is actually mapping our own facility, right? Right, yeah, we wanna map uh, the entire Phoenix campus. Uh, we wanna be able to provide walkthroughs for logistics, manufacturing, mm -hmm. our office tower, and things like that. Um, and you do that in a virtual way. So you get on the website, um, if you've got a headset, you could immerse yourself completely. You could do it just on your computer screen as well and, and kind of traverse the whole campus as if you were here. Um, there's also an element of augmented reality for anybody mm -hmm. that's on site that we'd like to um, deploy an application where you, you know, it's kind of like a heads up display as you're on site here at the facility, we can provide context where to go to, to what areas, what and, and, and self guided tours uh, in the context of you being here. I know I am particularly looking forward to that element because we continue to expand. We add more and more offices, which is great, except I get lost more and more. So <laughs> having the ability to have a headset or something where I, it just kind of guides me and I get a pop of, of, hey, turn here, this is your, uh, your meeting room. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be really, really cool. Yeah. Might be a little strange, but I think it's kind of <laughs> cool. Yeah. So what else do you see coming down the pike? Anything, I, I mean, the world is our oyster, but at the same time, you don't know what you don't know, right? Yeah, I, I, I would say just do more and, you know, let the customer decide what's valuable, what they want to see. Um, take everything a little bit further. Um, nothing's going to happen overnight, but for sure, you know, with the wearables, use them as much as we can to benefit, you know, the onboarding of machines so we can increase productivity and efficiency. Um, with our sales tools, you know, provide more and more product that are available, mm -hmm. you know, just at you know, visiting our website, uh, having, you know, as much of the catalog at your disposal as, as possible and richer, I would say, uh, experiences that provide more value without necessarily having have that physical product. Mm -hmm. All right, Matt, thanks so much for taking the time to sit down with us, give us that overview, that history lesson, as well as a sneak peek as to what may lie ahead. And uh, I know I personally am very excited and I think everybody watching out there, well, you should be excited. Um, there's gonna be some really cool stuff right around the corner here and uh, we'll just have to see what it all turns out to be, huh? Definitely. All right, guys, thanks so much. Take care, be safe.